I'll never forget the first time that we were showing this property before we decided to build the house. And it was just a feeling like I had found something special that I needed to be here. You know, everyone looks for their lifetime place and I felt like this was it, there's no question. In the mountains, surrounded by nature, it dawned on me that this was gonna be beyond being a great move for my family. This was gonna be an amazing place for me to work. I would open up my door and be in that pure, creative sanctuary every single day. And that's a dream come true. By not being formally educated in music, I was forced to tap into the emotional side of creativity and the emotional side of writing. I was forced to tune into the emotional side of, of what I was listening to. And the songs I was writing when I first started were two or three chords, and it was how I was delivering them. And I, I really didn't know the proper chord to go to if I started a song in A. I didn't know that the relative minor of that chord was a F sharp minor, but it didn't matter because I was just going off of my gut. And because of that, I think over the years, I've found paths in, in melodies and chord structure and song development that I probably wouldn't have stumbled on if I had been formally trained. That really leads you to discovery. In some ways, consciously and subconsciously, that's helped me develop some more unique sounds, more unique melodies, and given me a, a style that can define me. I was a kid and I was the first guy in the band who decided he was gonna sing, because no one else wanted to sing. And then I decided to learn how to work the equipment, because no one really wanted to do that either. And all these things that were kind of out of necessity because someone had to do them. Then they became tools. And now after all these years, you know, being a singer, being the main writer in my bands, learning how to work recording equipment, working in a recording studio, all these skills have come together where I realized it doesn't matter who walks through the door, I can feel a need. And that's given me the confidence to feel comfortable working with almost anyone from any genre. If I just wake up and go straight into the studio, I feel like the noise of the world just comes in too strong, too loud, too fast, and for me it's necessary to start my day off with more of a cleanse. Most mornings I'll head straight to Zuma Beach, I'll run all the way to, to Point Doom, run up to the top of the headlands, and I'll, I'll take a little breather there and I'll look out, gain some perspective, and set myself up for the day. So it's a running meditation for me, as I'm seeing the ocean reminding myself that it's constantly moving and constantly changing, and that's the only constant in this life is to change and to roll with it and to go with the flow. The energies that are here in Malibu and here on our ridge where I get to create music every day, there's no question that there are other forces at work. If you're just open to receive what the universe has for you, it's all right in front of you. A great example of that is, is the song X's and O's that I wrote with L King. L came up here and we didn't know what we were gonna do. You know, I had some ideas, had a couple titles, a couple of lyrics around. I just picked up the guitar and started playing a riff and she really liked it and it just uh, it just fell out of the sky for us that day. She wanted to work on it, and then we just started talking about her life, and I think just by being open to receive the creative energy that was there, we wrote the song that we were supposed to write that day, and the final recording of that song is what we recorded that day. It's the first time I played that guitar, it's the first time she sang it, and that's the beauty of it, it's, that's the purity of it, and 
that's what's so hard to capture. And you can't capture it, you just have to allow it. I'd heard my songs on the radio, I'd seen them on TV. It's a great feeling to see your work out in public and to see other people appreciating what you've created. There's no question. But so many times it had been an achievement of like, okay, wow, now we're on the charts, I'm gonna make some money, or cool, now this artist is gonna have a career. But when Fight Song by Rachel Platten came out, we believed in the song, but no one else was, and we couldn't figure it out. She put it up on YouTube and people started finding that song. Then we started to hear stories about how the song was inspiring people to help them through the struggles of an illness or any of life's struggles. That was the first time I felt a song or something that I've helped create move people on this emotional level and really touch people. If you write from the heart and you create from a deeper place, it's going to find its path. And if it's done with the passion and the, the inspiration that Fight Song was written with, then it's unstoppable. Every time a new artist comes up to write with me, they'll drive up the driveway, they'll get out of their car, and there's about 30 seconds of silence as they look around and they take it all in. By getting in tune with nature and with Malibu and with the beach and the ocean and the mountains, I just know I'm putting them in an environment where they're gonna be able to do their best. I see Malibu as the third writer in the room, and that's the part of the creative process that I don't think a lot of artists anticipate when they come up here. They've got everything that I see every day now inspiring them the way it's inspired me. All these studio settings that they're used to, and I'm giving them the freedom and the space. Then that collaborative process has to have a little bit of divine intervention. And this is a great place to field it, that's for sure.